feels like everything that needs to be said about lithium-ion battery fires has already been said by engineers, scientists, firefighters, safety experts, politicians. And despite all of these things being said, the problem is just getting worse. New York City is ground zero for e-battery fires. We have reached a point of crisis in New York City. Huge explosion at a battery recycling plant in Missouri. What you're seeing here is the battery from an e-bike or e-scooter exploding. This is close to our 200th fire this year. Fires caused by lithium ion batteries. More and more it's urban mobility devices, so uh, hoverboards, scooters, e-bikes. I think it's important that people have an understanding for the fact that uh, there is a lot of energy packed into these uh, into these units. Chicago Fire Department now tracks lithium ion battery fires which are happening more and more across the world right out of the facility reportedly one of the largest in the world that processes lithium ion batteries now these batteries have truly revolutionized our world powering everything from mobile phones to cars to entire buildings and in fact the creators of this technology received a nobel prize in 2019 for their invention the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has th today decided to award the 2019 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the development of lithium-ion batteries. <laughs> oh, come on! But here's the thing. As we rely more on them, the risks will continue to grow. You see, these batteries, for all their convenience and efficiency, come with some serious fire hazards. And we're seeing the effects of these hazards in our cities and homes. Now, before we go any further, we really need to have a look at how these batteries work. Because to understand the big picture, we need to start with the small. These batteries are highly complex with multiple variations and form factors, but at their core, they all share the same fundamental structure. If we break down a typical battery, we'll find four key components. An anode, which is the negative electrode, primarily made of graphite. A cathode, which is the positive electrode, typically composed of lithium metal oxides, such as lithium cobalt oxide or lithium ion phosphate. An electrolyte, typically a lithium salt, such as lithium hexafluorophosphate, dissolved in an organic solvent like ethylene carbonate, which facilitates the movement of lithium ions between electrodes. And a separator, a semi-permeable membrane that allows lithium ions to pass through, but blocks electrons preventing a short circuit. When a charged battery is connected to an electrical circuit, electrons begin flowing from the anode to the cathode, generating electrical power for devices. Meanwhile, the removal of these electrons means that there are now lithium ions that are free to move through the electrolyte and the separator to the other side of the battery. When they reach the cathode, they can then rejoin with the electrons that have passed through the electronic circuit to rebalance the lithium at a neutral charge. And this is essentially what's happening inside the battery each time we use one. Now, this process is exothermic, which means it produces heat. But under normal circumstances, this heat can be dissipated to the surrounding environment without causing any damage to the battery. Now, when we charge the battery, it's the same process, but in reverse where electrons will be forced from the cathode through the electronic circuit into the anode. And in a similar way, the lithium ions will also be transported back through the electrolyte and the separator to the other side of the battery, where they can rejoin with those electrons to form a balanced lithium atom. Okay, so now we've seen how these batteries are supposed to work what we need to do now is have a look at how they fail. Because if you have a look at the four basic components being the anode, 
cathode, electrolyte, and separator. Each one of these plays a very important part in how these batteries are supposed to work, but also what happens if they fail. For example, if the separator is damaged, then electrons will be able to flow from one side of the battery to the other internally without the use of an external circuit. This means that the battery would be able to rapidly discharge itself, producing a large amount of heat in the process. If this occurs, then the internal components within the battery can also be damaged by this additional heat and pressure, causing additional failures within the battery, which can then lead to further chemical and physical reactions that can cause the battery to fail even faster and therefore kick off the chain reaction that we know as a thermal runaway. Now, with all this additional heat and pressure inside the battery, if the enclosure fails, the internal components such as the electrolyte can then be released to atmosphere. Once outside the battery, this vapor can ignite, producing large flames. And the danger is even greater in battery banks, clusters of batteries housed together in sealed compartments. For example, what might be found in an electric vehicle or electric scooter. Inside these packs, a single failing battery can generate enough heat to trigger failures in neighboring batteries, causing a chain reaction. Now, generally speaking, failures in these batteries are quite rare especially if they've been bought from a reputable company because those companies have put a huge amount of time and effort into devising ways to ensure that these batteries don't go into thermal runaway. And the results of this work can be seen in real world data because Fire and Rescue New South Wales, a fire service that is responsible for taking care of Sydney, one of Australia's largest cities, has reported that in 2022, they responded to 171 lithium ion battery related incidents. And then in 2023, they responded to 285 incidents. Now, while this is a large increase over the space of one year, as a consumer, the chances of encountering a lithium ion battery related fire is incredibly low because in a city the size of Sydney, there are literally millions of batteries out there in circulation. And so by these numbers, the actual total number of lithium ion battery incidents is relatively low. But for firefighters, the story is different because even a single incident can escalate rapidly and pose serious threats. And this is why these kinds of fires are now firmly on the radar of fire services around the world. Now, even with the very best manufacturing standards and technology, these batteries are still susceptible to failure if they're damaged. And the main kinds of damage are excessive heat, which degrades internal components, physical damage, such as puncturing or crushing, and electrical abuse, like overcharging, deep discharging, or rapid cycling. Once thermal runaway begins, it becomes nearly impossible to stop. Firefighters have limited means to extinguish battery fires because the chemical reaction continues internally, making these fires almost impossible to extinguish. And yes, this is footage of an electric vehicle in thermal runaway submerged underwater. Okay, so these batteries can cause fires that are extremely difficult to extinguish. That's a problem, but it's certainly not the only one. Because if we have a look at the way that these batteries cause fires, they can be significantly different to most other accidental fires. Now, to fully understand just how different these battery fires are, we need to first look at how building fires have changed over the last 40 years. If you go back around four decades, most of the materials you'll find inside a building will be largely composed of natural materials like timber, cotton, and wool. And while these materials are flammable, 
pound for pound, they contain less fuel than modern synthetic materials like plastics and polyurethane foams, which not only contain more fuel on a pound for pound basis, but will also break down and start to emit flammable products that are required for flaming combustion at a much earlier stage than the legacy materials of timber, cotton and wool. And as you can see here, this was demonstrated by UL when they had the side-by-side -side comparison showing that flashover can occur in as little as three to five minutes in modern synthetic materials. But with the older legacy materials, flashover may take as long as 30 minutes because of the vastly different fuel types. So why is all of this important? Well, for a fire to reach flashover, it needs to be producing around about two megawatts of energy, give or take, depending on the size of the room and the fuel load involved. And what two megawatts of energy looks like is a single seater sofa fully involved in flames. And that is generally considered enough energy to allow a room to progress through to flashover. And this is where the lithium ion batteries come in because studies have shown that a e-bike or e-scooter's battery can produce around about one and a half megawatts of energy when it goes into thermal runaway. But this isn't the only part of the puzzle because it is also the way in which it releases this energy that creates a significant problem. Because if we think about how a normal house fire will progress, there is a period of time where the fire is building up heat and smoke in the upper layers as it progresses towards flashover. And as we've already shown, this can take between three and five minutes. And in fact, depending on the situation, it can take a lot longer than that as well. But when we're having a look at lithium ion batteries going into thermal runaway, they can be releasing their total peak heat release rate almost instantaneously as the battery goes into thermal runaway and begins to affect other batteries within that battery bank. For firefighters, this presents an extreme hazard if they are inside a structure fire. Where a battery pack goes into thermal runaway, they will experience a sudden and intense increase in the energy of the fire, making the conditions significantly harder to control while also putting them at serious risk. And it's reasonable to assume that the likelihood of this occurring is much higher than the statistics of normal thermal runaways. Because once a battery has been exposed to the high heat conditions within a structure fire, it is likely that internal components will be damaged by that heat and therefore increase the possibility of a thermal runaway. Another issue is how these fires can potentially reduce smoke alarm effectiveness. In a traditional fire, smoke builds gradually, allowing time for the alarm to sound and for the occupants to escape. However, lithium ion battery failures can release toxic smoke and flames so rapidly that residents may not have time to react, especially if it's a larger battery like what is normally found in an electric scooter or electric bicycle, and that has been positioned near a point of exit. And unfortunately, this still isn't the breadth of the problem because remember the electrolyte that is contained within the battery? Well, that electrolyte can contain fluorinated salts like hexofluorophosphate, a substance that when it breaks down during thermal runaway, can produce hydrogen fluoride, a substance that is both highly corrosive and very toxic to humans. And what is even more alarming is that even firefighters wearing full protective gear and breathing apparatus can still be susceptible to this product. This fundamentally changes the risk profile for both firefighters and occupants, making modern building fires even more dangerous than they were before. With all of this in mind, it is important to note that lithium ion batteries are not inherently dangerous when properly manufactured and used correctly. 
major brands invest heavily in battery management systems. And in fact, the failure rate for electric vehicles from major brands is extremely low. However, the real risk emerges when batteries are tampered with, damaged, overheated, or sourced from low quality manufacturers. Well, there we have it. Lithium ion batteries have truly been revolutionary, creating possibilities and convenience that we've never had before. But that convenience can come at a cost. But that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, give it a like, or if you've got something to add, drop it in the comments down below. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.